All right, good afternoon folks, it's Skid with you. Pretend I'm driving along here because that's what I'm supposed to be doing, but I can't right now. It's winter time here in Edmonton and a uh, very weird winter it is. So it was minus 35 a week ago and now it's plus four. And my van is absolutely stuck in the ice. And rather than blow out the transmission, because uh, I like to drive it once a month during the winter, just take it out. Uh, I'm just going to leave it here until the ice gets out of the way and we go from there. So just pretend. Okay, welcome to my walk through the Flight of Time video. Uh, Flight of Time is what I've dubbed my nice little conversion van and rig with trailer here. Uh, this video will explain some of the stuff that I did with the preface that don't do it necessarily the way I did. I did this just because this is exactly the way I wanted the van. I am not recommending any of this. Just showing the folks out there at Project Van Life and wherever else and whoever's else interested what I did. So without further ado, we'll get to it. Let me just say that uh, the point behind doing all this was I wanted in semi-retirement here to go see my friends, see some cool places, be able to stay there for a month on my own in here and carry all my toys with me, which includes motorcycle, bicycle, workout gear, the whole nine yards. In other words, take the best part of my house and be comfortable with me and live on the road as much as I can. So as I go through this, keep that in mind because that's how I designed it. Okay, let's move on to the next part. All right, well, as you can see, the Flight of Time is a Ford Transit uh, Van 250 uh, 2019. The uh, thing to note about it is it's very, very tall. And that's because I'm not very tall, but I'm tall. Six feet, so that lets me wander around inside there. That's what drove me there. The other part is it's powerful enough to tow that trailer back there. And that trailer weighs up to 3,200 pounds from time to time because it has a 700-pound motorcycle into it. More on that later. So I had installed a complete tow package, including brake controller, because there are electric brakes on the trailer. Next part. All right, most singular part about my conversion is it's got a shower in it. I really don't know of too many others I've heard of who put a full-size like shower into a Ford Transit van that's not even a long body, but an extended body. So why? Because I want to shower on the road. Can it be done? Yes, but just. We'll come back to how that all works in a little bit, but uh, yeah, actually, it works. It works. Three minutes, but it works. Okay, so getting on to more interesting stuff. Um, the insulation is just fiberglass put behind cardboard panels. I put those panels up on the ceiling myself with just cardboard I bought and automotive push pins. And I don't know if you can see back there, but there's already, here we'll give you a bit of light. Uh, there's already uh, panels on the wall. So just stuffed insulation behind there, that's all. It's not designed to go below freezing. Uh, can you live in it below freezing? Sure, but there'll be condensation everywhere and there's no vapor barrier. Okay, on the floor is just three quarter plywood. I don't know if you can see from there with uh, vinyl uh, vinyl flooring on it. And what it what I did was I just cut it into jigsaw puzzle pieces so that you can stabilize that so that it sits flush with the floor and it doesn't move anywhere. And all that means then is this in combination with, I don't know if you can see up there, there's two by four runners right here. I put one on one side and one on the other side because there's pre-tapped holes in the van walls. So I put those against the van walls. And so all of this structure is either bolted, well, it's bolted into the two by fours and the floor. So it doesn't go anywhere. Why would I do that? Because if for some reason this doesn't work out or whatever, I wanted to get rid of it, I can reconvert this back to a cargo van within a day because there are no structural changes to the van. Except for one. And that's the uh, ceiling fan. So the ceiling fan um, is a structural change, but talking to my insurance people, they don't even care. So one thing you might want to take into account is that you do structural changes to a van, it changes your insurance that you get for the vehicle. That didn't. 
Uh, one thing to note about that Max Air uh, fan, by the way, which you need, you need some kind of fan in there to give yourself uh, uh, ventilation, in, in addition to screens. So all I did was I took some screening and put some magnets on it and taped it all up with Gorilla Tape, and that goes on the front windows and the back so you can get ventilation. Anyway, uh, those Max Air fans, keep in mind they have a known defect that if you put more than 12 volts into that circuit board, you're going to fry it. And you say, oh, but my car battery is only 12 volts, or, you know, your system's only 12 volts. Yeah, until when it isn't. When you're charging it, uh, the alternator will charge up the batteries up to where it's about uh, 14 volts. So, yeah, I put in a voltage regulator. You should do the same. Okay, next part. Okay, water system. Water source is, I don't know if you can see back up there, is a five gallon, uh, just a normal five gallon uh, water bottle that you get from the water stores and all that stuff. Uh, why is it way up there in a big bracket? Because it provides gravity flow to the sink down here. So with gravity power alone, I can get hot and cold water to the sink. I'll talk about the hot water in a second. This pump up here, which you can see back here, is for the shower. It needs uh, some pressure to push the shower uh, water in through there. Otherwise, it's all gravity fed. Um, systems of valves and all that stuff is a little complicated. We can talk about that later if you're interested. Let's move on to the hot water heater just for a second. That's back there, two and a half gallon hot water heater. Takes a fair amount of power, but uh, with the uh, hot water uh, all heated up and then the pump going, all that, I get three minutes of hot shower. Uh, where does it all go? Uh, there's a hose down there, you can see that just goes, I just push that overboard. Whoa, lost the camera. Push that overboard and uh, that's the water just uh, vents overboard. And down there, as you can see, is a five gallon pail. And that's where the sink drains to, and you just empty it. Okay, next. Hey, electrical system, a little on the complicated side, but uh, no problem. I wanted to be able to run my computer in here, uh, so I needed a decent inverter with uh, no RF interference for uh, Wi-Fi, cellular, all that stuff. So I went with a Samlex inverter, which is pricey, but so worth it because the power is awesome. On either side, I got two banks of two 12-volt uh, batteries that supply all the power. Uh, the big red switch in the back says uh, which bank is on, and this black switch uh, determines whether the batteries are going into the uh, inverter slash charger or uh, the alternator of the car. Uh, gives great power for uh, what I need in here. Obviously, you can't run everything at the same time, but it will give me one day's worth of power, pretty much getting one bank down to halfway. Now, uh, how you charge it is I got external ground power. Uh, or uh, generator power It takes about three hours to charge up half a side and The I've got solar panels in the front uh, That you can move around that takes about uh, eight hours with really nice sunlight and uh, The alternator of the car or the van will uh, charge it up to uh, like in 20 minutes. It's it's amazing Okay, uh, one last thing uh, Two circuits uh, off that uh, 15 amp uh, box there or that uh, junction box, each of 15 amps. Like I said, you can't run everything at the same time, but it uh, it definitely works and uh, supplies power, as you can see with all the lights on here. Okay, next. Hey, bed and living space uh, over here. As you can see, um, I wanted originally to get uh, one of the long body variants of the Transit, uh, but uh, they just weren't available. So I got the, the, the extended body instead, it's two feet uh, less. So I had to go with this overlapping configuration. At the end of the day, it worked out better anyway. I can barely fit this van into uh, into the back lane uh, where I park anyway. So th this works out fine and uh, makes it better. So this is kind of the design I went with. This is all just two by fours and plywood. I had a special mattress made for this bed, like just foam. So not expensive, but to the exact specifications I needed. And that's awesome uh, because it's great for my back. So yeah, it, you've already seen the sink there, so that's where the kitchen bathroom is kind of thing. And it all works, it's a little cramped, but uh, it all works just perfect. Uh, one last thing I guess I should say, up there is where all my clothes go into those bins. They're Velcroed down. Groceries go up here, that's Velcroed down too. And uh, I didn't mention it, but over in the front there, uh, there's a power cooler underneath all that and that uh, keeps my food nice and cold. By the way, that's the biggest power draw. That uh, will be 50 watts, but it's on all the time. So there you go. Okay, next. Hey, uh, one last part about uh, cooking. You guys might be interested in that. Microwave mostly. 
uh, takes care of that. Uh, I've got a little, like one little element stove in there, again electric, so I can work all that off the electrical system. If I want to save electricity, got a little tiny briquette barbecue that I cook outside. I mean, rather spend time outside. Anyway, uh, kettle is by far and away the most efficient way of making hot water to do dishes. Okay, that's that for that. Okay, this is the payload aspect of the uh, whole thing. It's the uh, trailer that goes in the back of the rig. This is what carries all the toys. Uh, let's go inside. Okay, we'll just have to hold on to this. So this is the inside of the trailer. I'll get out of the way. Uh, I will put a picture up which shows what it looks like when it's fully loaded. Obviously, we're in the winter time right now. My motorcycle would go right down the middle and you can see where the, uh, the tie downs are at the front. Uh, and uh, I just made a little uh, wooden wheel chalk for the bike to go in there. Uh, nice touring bike on that side, trash bike on that side, you know, to get groceries and stuff when you're parked. And uh, you can see I've got a whole weight rack in here, which is great for chin-ups in the woods. If you go see my video origin story, you can see how I uh, actually was doing a workout in the middle of nowhere, testing this out. Uh, Olympic bar over there, a bunch of weights in here. I don't know if you can see down there. Uh, yeah, I carry almost uh, 225 pounds of weight with me. Not a full gym, but not bad. Kettlebells, wall balls, the whole nine yards. What the heck, might as well have fun on the road. Uh, you can also see uh, jerry cans for extra gas. My scuba gear goes in the back. Why would I put the scuba gear in the back? Because uh, this trailer, by the time it all gets loaded, let me set this down so it's a little easier. Uh, by the time this trailer is all fully loaded, uh, it's up at uh, 3,200 pounds, which means uh, we have a, a very, very large tongue weight if we're not careful how we uh, monitor the CFG. So tongue weight can't go over about 750. I keep it well below 600, and that works out fine. Ride is fine. Uh, as you can see, what else I put in here, uh, just tools that I need for on the road. Uh, like I said, scuba gear, camping gear, all the workout gear, motorcycle gear, bicycle gear, all the toys so I can go play with my friends on the road, just exactly what the point was. Uh, in terms of stability, how she goes, the van trailer combo works pretty good. Actually, testing the mountains in the rain, no problem. Uh, going up, down hills, lots of power, lots of braking. Electric brakes, you know, once you tune your electric brakes, so you do it right. Uh, that's uh, that's perfect. Handles the, the bike, no problem. Bike in and out, no problem at all. It's, a, it's really quite awesome. The one thing I would not do with any of this is ever go in the snow or ice. No way. Uh, the van's only rear wheel drive and this would just take it right off the road. The other thing to be careful of if you're doing this kind of thing is uh, that kind of van is, uh, because it's so big, with a crosswind it's got a lot of cross-sectional area. So when the winds get pretty strong, um, yeah, you got to be a little bit careful. Weirdly enough, having the trailer attached actually makes it more stable because uh, there's a huge amount of weight back here so it actually drives pretty good. All right, that's enough for here. Actually, it's not quite enough for here. Uh, so the motorcycle tie downs came with the trailer. They were already put in, but all the other tie downs you see in clamps and stuff, that was uh, a rings tie downs. That's all the stuff I put in with uh, self-tapping screws into the metal of the, the trailer, including everything that puts that shelving up in there. So you can do it. It just takes a little while and putting all those things through. But obviously you just can't attach stuff to the uh, particle board. That won't work. Okay, so one last thing about the uh, trailer there. Getting everything in and out is tough. So putting everything in there, it take, you have to really, really squeeze it in. So it's very optimized for space, which leads me to my last point. I designed all of this so that I could get my stuff down to see my friends and stay with them or wherever I want to go as cheap as I possibly could. I didn't really care how pretty it was and I didn't care how complicated it was in terms of me operating it. There's actually some very very simple systems in here but ironically simple systems are very complicated to operate. I don't mind. I've got checklists this thick about even how to take a shower and stuff in there because this valve, that valve, etc. But that's fine. I like that. I prefer systems that are simple because I can fix them. If you have something that's easy to operate, it's because it's full of automation and probably has a microchip in it. I don't like that. All right, in uh, closing, I'd like to mention that I have a channel on YouTube. In fact, this video is going to go up on there as well. Uh, that documents some of the adventures I've been having on the road, uh, mostly uh, cycling stuff, uh, motorcycling, that kind of thing. I encourage you to go check it out if you want to go see. It's uh, called Unchained Skid. 
I'm Skid, I'm Unchained, hence the name. Uh, go take a look, uh, comment, like, subscribe, you know, all that BS. Uh, but more, than, more importantly, if uh, anybody has some short stories to share with me or wants some commentary, share some ideas, please feel free, either comment on there or send me an email, uh, unchained.skid at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from uh, other folks doing the same kind of thing because this is all about uh, being free and doing what we want. So uh, good luck to everybody else out there for doing your thing. If you're just starting off and wondering, just go for it. And if you're already well in it, awesome for you. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, folks, you have a great one. We'll talk to you soon and hopefully spring comes soon. All right, take care. Bye-bye.